Hello everyone. Welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So this week I got a question on the forums asking how to place a lot of rivets onto a mechanical object. And it came to me that there are actually a lot of techniques for how to do this. You can position them manually, you can use the normal align tool, you can use the array tool, or if it's really complicated, you can use the spacing tool. I want to show all of those to you today in this Monday movie. So let's get started. For my rivet, I'm just going to use an ordinary geosphere. It's going to have two segments, and it's going to be an octahedron and a hemisphere. Those are the only things that I changed from the standard settings. I'm going to create it here, not too big, not too small. Looks good. And the first technique is manual placement. I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees and slap it onto this uh, cube object. Just like that. And this technique is just fine if you're going to be, um, you know, putting down three of them like that. Nothing special, very quick, you don't have to use any, any impressive tools. The next technique is using the normal align tool. So what if I wanted to put rivets on this funny face right here? The trouble is that it's at kind of a weird angle, I might not exactly know what that angle is, so is there a quick and easy way to, to align those? The answer is yes. I'm going to copy out one of these rivets. Shift drag. It's an instance. And I'm going to rotate it so I can see the back. Because it's a hemisphere, the back is nice and flat, so that's easy to work with. I'm going to come up here to the align tool, and I'm going to click drag down to normal align. The normal align tool will let us align the two normals together. I'm going to click drag on my target object. I'm going to try to click drag on my target object. There we go right in the middle and I'm gonna put it right here in the corner click drag perfect and now they're perfectly aligned together I'm gonna to make it just a little bit smaller for that that demo right there and because I'm using the normal coordinate space right here local I'm still working within the alignment of that rivet so I can just shift drag and put these into place now I've got three rivets. Perfect. So what if your shape is a little more complex than a flat surface, but then again it's not so complex as to warrant using special paths like the cylinder? Well in this case you'll want to use uh, the array tool, array and align. As a good practice I'm going to center my uh, pivot on this object and I'm going to align it to this cylinder. I believe I want X and Y axis just to make things easy. Click OK. So I've left the Z axis open so that I can move the rivet in and out. And right here is about right. You want a little bit of collision so that it looks like it's really part of the same object. The last thing I need to do before using the array tool is align the pivot of the rivet to the cylinder. So I'm going to go back into my effect pivot only and I'm going to use my align tool and center it to the cylinder. Now all I have to do is go up to tools, array, and when I click preview you can see that it's now going all the way around this cylinder. I'm using totals by clicking here 360 degrees around the cylinder and there are 10 instances. Click OK. Perfect. We now have rivets that go all the way around the cylinder. But what if this wasn't a cylinder? What if it was something much more complicated, like a, a character's arm, a piece of armor, uh, the wing of an aircraft, that kind of thing? Well, in that case, we're going to want to use the spacing tool. So let me show you how to use that on this letter B right here. So I'm going to select one of my rivets here, preferably one of the ones that's still orthogonal. That works take a copy and I'm going to fix the pivot really quick here there we go and now what we want to do is put these rivets around the, the outline of this letter B let me make it easier to see for you there we go so I want to make it go around this letter B what we need here is a shape 
a shape that follows the contour of the letter. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to select my letter. I'm going to hit Control V, which is going to create a copy. Click OK. I'm going to move the copy up slightly so I can see it better. The next thing we're going to do is select the top polygon on this letter B, and I'm going to inset it. Inset works pretty well for this technique. I'm going to click OK. Now what I need are the edges. So I'm going to hold down Control and click on my edge selection. And that's going to select all the edges from that polygon. What I don't want are all these interior edges. I don't want rivets there. So I'm just going to deselect them. Just like that. Select all the way around. Perfect. And then finally I'm going to click Create Shape from Selection. I want it to be linear because there's not much uh, refinement out here. So I'm going to click OK. And now I'm all set. I can delete this copy. So I've got my original letter B, and I have the outline that I want my rivets to follow. Cool. So I'm going to go up to Edit, or uh, Tools, go to Align, and I'm going to go to the Spacing tool. Click OK. So now I'm going to select my, my rivet, move it a little bit closer here. It looks like it's still a little bit big, but we can fix that afterwards. And I'm going to click on Pick Path. And I'm going to click that path right there. If your preview goes away, you can always just manipulate some of these. Cool. So I'm going to pick 20 rivets going around the circumference of the letter, making sure that they're an instance. And I'm going to click Apply, and then Close. Now all I have to do is a little bit of refinement. I can lower the radius, move the letter around, kind of position it just right. Right there. Perfect. Delete my original uh, path, and now I'm done. My letter B now has rivets going around the complex shape. And this applies to all things. You can use it on, like I said, aircraft. You can use it on characters. You can use it for clothing. All of these are really awesome techniques, and knowing which ones to use can save you a little bit of time and make sure that you're using the right tool for the job. Thanks for tuning in to another Monday Movie. You can find all of my Monday Movies as well as tutorials, resources, and downloads on my website, www.mrbluesummers.com.